Hi, this is Vega47 and I want to welcome you at uh, probably the first installment of a probably series uh, about Java Simon. I want to talk mostly about Java Simon Core, what it allows you to do because Java Simon is um, kind of a do-it-yourself um, performance monitoring API. It provides some out-of-the-box support for um, servlet monitoring uh, you know how long the web request takes, uh, some uh, Spring Interceptor, JDBC proxy driver, and um, similar stuff. And we uh, try to extend, you know, these these additional packages. But the core itself is very important, and we can't possibly provide every every support for every framework. And that's where you come in, and you can use the the basics. Uh, how to work with stopwatches, Simon Manager, and so on and so on. And that's what this series will be about. If you don't know what the Simon is, um, I'm wondering how you look this video. But um, you can easily find us on uh, two important pages. One of them is um, actually our Google page, but you will get there through using our domain javasimon.org. It will take you on uh, this page. Um, here you see what Java Simon is about, but more important is probably this page or project page, Java uh, code, uh, Google code page. Here you can uh, uh, find some pages how to get started, um, how to put Maven dependencies in. I think we uh, have a very nice Java doc. Uh, overviews for packages and even for the whole project. And here you can see the you know, first steps you can take before you, I don't know, start using uh, some uh, Simon Serlot filter or something like that. But I want to focus on uh, the core, as I, as I said already. And for that we will use something very simple. Imagine this is a I don't know, code that uh, runs some process a couple of times and uh, this process or it can be method or anything that is um, of your interest uh, you want to measure it uh, it takes random time depending on uh, the inputs for instance uh, we simulated with a random number generator here and if you want to measure it um, the you know most easier thing you can do is oops <coughs> I think it's terrible lately. You can get a current value of nano timer or current time millis, but sometimes things are so fast that you need something more precise. And uh, Java Simon uses nano timer, so just for a smooth transition from uh, this way to Simon way, we will use nano timer too. Then, of course, you need to kind of find out how long it took and print it out. If you want you can inline it. Though I would say there will be some problem here. Yeah definitely. Mm, funny. I would rely on <laughs> IntelliJ idea nearly with my life but sometimes you see nothing is perfect. So here we start kind of the measurement and here, here we will stop it. You see the values? Uh, just uh, so it doesn't bother us anymore we will remove this output. You can do the same with uh, Java Simon in, uh, using so called split. Split is something that uh, represents one single measurement. You can start it. I will use single letter a single letter variable just so you can compare it and you can you can report current value of the split you see that we have roughly the same values not necessarily because there is still nano time here another nano time internally here here and uh, well yeah one here as well 
so you see that the running split takes this long which is probably better output than this one because you would have to count the groups of uh, six numbers and uh, uh, it changes the unit microseconds, nanoseconds up to seconds then it doesn't change anymore so that's the first nice touch and it's also a little bit shorter so, so far clear win for Java Salmon but imagine you want more, you want you know this is some particular method and you want to group all the all the uh, invocation of this method into some logical I don't know aggregate which would uh, tell you the maximum minimum and so on and so on that's where Simon's stopwatch comes in stopwatch is um, probably the most important class in uh, Simon you can obtain it by, from Java uh, from Simon Manager. You can name it, but we will uh, call it without name. Sort of, uh, this will always create create a new stuff which for you is just for the sake of experiments here. And you can start the split on the stopwatch. It's very easy. Stopwatch start. It will return the split. On the split in the end you have to call stop it's very important you didn't have to do it when you just you know measure with, uh, with the split itself because um, you just get the time uh, for how long it took until that particular point of the execution but here it is very important to stop the stopwatch otherwise it would you know go on and on and on and it would never report the value to the stopwatch So here we see that the uh, output changed. Uh, split is not running anymore. It stopped, and it also reports that it's a split for a particular stopwatch. In this case, the stopwatch's name is now. The rest is the same. What this will bring us is that we can easily find out. Uh, I will use this. Uh, some basic facts about and you know we will see the big bigger picture of uh, that method how long it took in total how many times it was executed maximum minimum and so on and so on and that's not all actually this is just a short output of the values that uh, stopwatch has for us install so let's see let's see more because it also remembers when minimum maximum appeared uh, it also tells you how many active splits are currently running for it it's zero how many active splits were running concurrently which is one because it was all sequential when it when this maximum appeared the first one the first maximum uh, what was the last value mean value and some some uh, statistical stuff when it was last used and so on and so on well and so on, it's actually nearly off <laughs> nearly everything you can also attach a note to a stopwatch just in case some string would uh, add a meaning to it which is used actually for I don't know mm, it's a um, for JDBC driver for instance we put uh, the, the SQL here because it would be very difficult to name the stopwatch itself by the SQL so so that's a stopwatch the first first look at it imagine what you have to do uh, if you wanted to um, do it like in in place you know with all the boilerplate code you need of course we don't need this anymore we just want this part here not the every measurement you need these two lines you need these li these two lines here uh, you uh, may uh, inline this here which would in this case of course call this 10 times instead of just once but it's not a big overhead actually and in many cases you don't uh, run splits 
inside the inside the loop. In case you do, it's, this is probably reasonable. Also, in case you have a lot of, um, mm, uh, if if you already have some try catch uh, block in your code, it's probably good to put stop into finally just in case nothing will happen there is no memory leak well something will happen what will happen will uh, these this active number will grow slowly every time you forget to stop the uh, every time you fail to stop the split it's an as I said it's not a memory leak problem it's just this number will grow and you will immediately see that ah for this stopwatch mostly you you name it somehow and for this stopwatch the number grows so probably I have uh, uh, some missing finally just for that particular uh, stopwatch start so there's a start um, what can we do more um, we'll talk about it later because there's a lot of stuff that goes under undercover and there's a lot of extension points you can use for just the stopwatch and actually many many um, features in Java Salmon are created through this extension points like login you can uh, you can uh, keep some specified number of last values for the stopwatch and so on and so on we'll talk about it later see you for this time good night <laughs>